We're blessed. Those tuning in by design or accident. You know who you are. Welcome to Weird Radio. Last time we all chatted, listeners, we started with something a little morbid. To counteract that, in hopes that maybe you'll cheer up a bit, we've decided to start with happier things. It looks like there's going to be a final decision in regards to the two High Tides crew Motley members that are in current custody. Listeners, you didn't hear this from me, but the Magister of Nightmares has been spotted. Quinn Longfinger. It's been five years since he ascended, and only one other time has he made his proclamation of the justice that only the Autumn Court could hope, or dare, to deliver. The first time was within the first year of his appointment, when one of the courtless in the area began preying on those descending and whether or not they were going to join the Scarlet Mirror Freehold. Some of you are too new to remember, but it was a scandalous affair and caused applicant rates to drop in staggering numbers. It was 2013, and the first victim had turned up. Her name was Brett. She was left just barely breathing outside of the skyscraper's doors. Her wounds were severe, but thanks to the spring court, she was able to be healed. Not long after that, the second victim was found. This time, not alive. The attacker had presumably found his stride, because in the next few months, a body was left with the same calling card each time. A single etched apple into the foreheads of the corpses sketched in with black ink. It was during this time that Quinn, just having taken over the title for the previous magister who passed away, executed his first order. During the Spring Queen's ascension to the throne, the magister arrived with his followers. Oh lordy, if you had been there, your heart would have stopped. I was there. I swear time froze. A chill went down my spine and I wasn't the only one that suffered it. Everything stopped. Music cut off and people stopped eating. Oh, just thinking about it now just gives me the chills. He stood on the stage like he owned it, as though he were the Dread Lord, and said with the most cold voice I've ever heard from a person, Tonight begins the Ashen Hunt. As he spoke, the warm spring breeze turned biting and cold. Some mystical arts covered the moon, and even the lamps that had been out for decoration dimmed. And he continued, This monster that hunts in our territory will be found, and then he shall be the prey for the freehold to pursue and capture. And so it was decreed. It took Quinn two months to drag the offender to the freehold, kicking and screaming, howling like a madman that he was innocent. The Oni, who went by the name of Red Robert, he stood by his innocence the entire time. The freehold was torn at first, but the evidence was damning. The hunt began. He was hunted through the streets of consequence, hemmed in at every turn, until the blood he was so fond of consuming was left to paint the town red. Jack Crow, upon his nightmare steed, struck the final blow. No finer man at his craft had been seen until then. Red Robert was gutted like an animal, his entrails strung over the city's outer wall where Jack had pinned him. Blood ran in the streets that full moon, and Jack paid tribute to Brett. As I mentioned before, many of you are new yet and don't know quite what the Autumn Court is capable of. But remember, nightmares are born of their machinations. So now this begs the question, listener. When a man who hasn't been seen in public for years is seen again, what is he going to do? On a related note, listeners, we have an update on the murders that happened outside of the Diva's Elixir. After some investigating, it seems as though the bodies have been brought from elsewhere and left outside of the nightclub for people to find. Liz and the job are tracking down the original site and will hopefully have more news soon. As it stands, no other victims have shown up. And now, a word from our sponsors. Your bike is your baby and Hell on Wheels gets that. From repair to custom parts, even to custom designs, Hell on Wheels is there to treat your baby right and keep it running smooth. Check us out in the Merchant Circle or just call 1-666-257-2365 or visit us online at hellonwheels.com. The all-new Blue Infinity is now open. With DJs turning out the latest hits, a wide open dance floor, and drinks that flow, you'll want to be where the party's at. Blue Infinity is also hiring the alternative and unique. Hit them up at 1-666-325-8796. It's good to hear you're breathing on the other side of things again, listeners. While we began tonight's show with the delightfully chilling news of the Magister, I'm afraid our closing news will not be quite so pleasing. 
Over the recent weeks, several members of the Freehold have fallen ill and further into a coma. This is incredibly unfortunate, and we offer our sincerest well wishes to the families of those who have gone under. Word on the street is, too, that other people in consequence are also falling into comas. Several of the hospitals are reaching capacity and shuffling patients to hospitals further out on the city's edges. If you see symptoms such as slurred words, a fogginess in attention or memory, please reach out to the physicians. Champagne Daisy has stated they are exploring all possibilities. Champagne Daisy has stated they are exploring all possibilities. Our second announcement is a reminder to our listeners to please be safe while dealing with the hedge. Recent trips have brought hobgoblin attacks that grow fiercer each time. Recently, even Zong and Lulu were seen returning to the freehold after a known trip into the hedge. Lulu was seen to be injured quite badly. While over the past few years we have enjoyed a certain kind of quiet freedom with the hedge, it seems that time is running out now. If you do dare to enter the hedge, be wary and be sure nothing escapes after you. This is a DJ signing off, listeners. Stay tuned for Bones and his new single, Crown. And remember, sheep music is basically just a sound recipe.